So good morning, everyone. Welcome to Creating Videos on the Go with Keltora's mobile application. I'm really excited about this workshop. Uh, for starters, we've never done this topic before. And as far as I know, in the three years that I've been here, we've never done a flash 30 minute workshop. So I know that you're gearing up for finals week and you have a lot on your plate. So I promise to be quick and not take up too much of your time. But we can go ahead and get started. Just for a quick tech check, if you're new to Zoom, um, here are some guidelines on different things that you can use here in this uh, session. You are welcome to turn on your microphone or your camera, but you're not obligated to do so. If you'd want to see who's in the per in the session with you, you can click on the participant tab. Um, and we will probably use the text chat a bit. So just to give you a little background on myself, my name is Megan Holt. I'm the online teaching coordinator at Northern Illinois University. I work in the Center for Innovative Teaching and Learning. And my background is in teaching English composition as well as developmental reading. And currently I am also a doctoral student in an online program. So I think I can give you a little bit of a perspective maybe from the student angle as well as from the staff and the educator side. So. If you have any questions, let me know. And I think we're all set. So just quickly to let you know what's on the agenda, um, we're gonna start just briefly with introductions and quick icebreakers. I know we've only got 30 minutes, so I wanna make sure I get all of the information in for you today. Um, we're going to start off just looking at what is KMS Go? Where did this come from? Um, why, why should we be interested in it? Uh, we're going to switch into looking at our student population, maybe understanding who they are, who our, our online students are, um, and how we can serve them. And then finally, the, probably the last part that you're most interested in are the steps and the instructions for using KMS Go. Um, I see that I forgot one other thing in here. I also included just a couple of slides to show you how to upload your Kaltura videos from the student perspective. It's very similar to how instructors upload videos into their Blackboard course, um, but you may receive some questions about this. So I wanted to make sure to add that in there. Okay, so now I'm gonna turn it over to you and hopefully you can find the text chat, but you can send me an emoji to describe your mood. I always appreciate these. Um, but tell everybody what it is that you teach, and if possible, um, how do you or your students currently use videos in your course? I'm curious to see what everyone's been doing, and this is a great way to hear from all the different departments. I can go first if you like. Um, Absolutely. I teach, I teach management. Um, so I have been uh, using, uh, I've been recording videos on Calcura, basically online lectures, um, and I just post them on Blackboard. Uh, occasionally I have students um, record videos when they are unable to present in person in class, but I don't require them to use anything, you know, whatever works for them just as a, as a video. Great, thank you so much, Tabaki. I love that you, you're looking at videos as an alternative to face-to-face, -to -face, whether you're an online instructor or maybe some type of a blended or hybrid um, style of teacher. We have a lot of different options for our students. And um, you know, you bring up a valid point. Sometimes students can't make it to, to campus to present. And certainly as we approach the winter season, um, this is something we may wanna consider. All right, and I'm seeing some activity going on here in the chat. So I'm gonna take a look at this as well. Oh, Jenny, I love the face. See some nutrition courses. Oh, that's exciting. I always love those classes. Lena is relieved that the semester is almost over. And she teaches introductory public speaking and business communication occasionally. Fantastic. So 
So it sounds like some of you are using videos primarily for lectures. Um, sometimes your students will present. Um, so I, I want to start thinking about videos today um, a little bit as a multi-purpose tool. It's not just something that you have to use. It's um, the, a tool that invites your students to bring some creativity to the space. And so this is something that you or your students can use. And Jenny says that she finds students prefer videos over written correspondence. I think you're right, um, or, or many of them prefer it. All right. So let's take a look at this. What is KMS Go? I, I know I said it's a mobile app, um, but let's get a little bit of background information going here so you can um, see why this might benefit either yourself or your students. So KMS Go, it stands for Kaltura Media Space Go, or KMS Go. So Kaltura is NIU's official video platform. And basically, it means that we now have a free mobile application that allows you to quickly upload your videos to the Kaltura My Media Library. And as you can see on the left side of the screen here, these are the devices that it will work on. So we even have tablets, we have iPhones, um, and we have Androids. Now, I know some of you know Kaltura, and maybe you've heard of MediaSpace, but oftentimes I find that people aren't really sure what MediaSpace is. So I just wanted to provide a little bit of context for you. Typically, whether you're a student or an instructor, I will see people accessing Kaltura by logging into Blackboard. And so that's what you should be seeing on your screen right now. Um, you log into Blackboard, you click on Tools, and then there's a button that says Kaltura My Media. And this is where your videos are housed. This is an excellent way to get into your videos because it's closely connected to your Blackboard courses. It makes sense to go this route. Um, but if you are not aware, there is a second option for accessing your video content, and that's through a public website that we call MediaSpace. So you're welcome to use this site as well if you want to get into your video content. And some people might be wondering, well, why do I need two different logins? Um, I like to think of it kind of as um, a building with two entrances. So your videos are housed in this building. Maybe you're, you typically go through the front door, which is Blackboard. Um, and this could be kind of the side door. And through here, you have a couple of other options. So if you want to share your videos externally, so maybe you want to share your videos with a colleague, maybe somebody who who doesn't even work for NIU and is not a Kaltura user, you can create links um, for your videos that make them publicly accessible. Anybody who clicks on that link can watch your video. Um, and so I find that's the primary reason for using MediaSpace. Um, but again, you can use either one. So when we talk about um, KMS Go and what Kaltura MediaSpace Go stands for, um, this hopefully um, eliminates a little bit of that confusion for you. And again, our video platform, Kaltura, is for everybody. So we're talking staff, students, and faculty. So anyone can use this site. And I will be sure to send out um, a link to our recording after this workshop, as well as a list of resources. So if you're scrambling to write down the, the link, don't worry, I will send that to you. And if I... I didn't highlight it uh, well enough earlier. I, I do want to uh, remind you that Kaltura is bringing together in harmony iPhones um, and Androids. So uh, my boss and I often joke about this. We can not arrive at a consensus of which one is better. Um, and in here, we do not have to decide that this app works for both types of devices. Um, so this should serve pretty much everyone. Okay, so before I jump into the logistics of how to use KMS Go and what it does, I thought we should just pause for a moment and take a look at our unique student population. So these are some things that we have 
known about our students for quite some time, I would say that these features um, were maybe even highlighted more during the pandemic um, as we had to resort to remote online teaching and learning. But this can really impact our students and how they interact with videos. So it's a good idea to keep some of these um, features in mind when you develop assignments. We know that a lot of students choose either online courses or hybrid style courses because of the flexibility that it offers for their schedule. Our students typically are adults. They're very busy. They may have careers or families or any number of outside responsibilities in addition to their education. But we can actually utilize that in our classroom. All of this experience can really make an interesting dynamic as students interact with each other and with you. We also know that our students are very diverse. They come from a lot of different cultural backgrounds. They have unique interests. And they also may want to bring in some of their, their heritage into the classroom. And so this is a great way to do so. Um, again, videos can highlight things maybe that uh, we lose in written context. We also know that our students, if they're in an online course, may be scattered all around the globe. Um, I know as a student, I was sitting in a class with somebody who was in a completely different time zone. Uh, so it can present challenges, but the flip side to this is that these online classrooms, they're not restricted to just students sitting in front of a computer. It means that they can take their education with them wherever they go. Uh, and likewise, they can they can bring that into the classroom as well. And so they can they can show you maybe some different areas uh, that you have not seen. And finally, we do realize that while our classrooms are diverse and you may find students from all different generations. Increasingly, we're seeing that our students have a lot of technology at their fingertips. They're very familiar with it. Um, so if you tell them about a free mobile application, it's really not that we're asking them to learn a brand new program or some type of new software. It's this idea that they're going to use things that um, they're already familiar with in a new way. So it would definitely capitalize on that and, and let them know about this feature. So I said today we were gonna look at why we would do field recordings. Well, what does that look like? Um, and so there are different reasons why you may be interested um, in either doing this yourself as an instructor or asking your students to participate. For starters, you can just change your background. Um, a lot of times when we think about doing recordings, we, we think about sitting in front of a webcam. Um, so you might see a little bit of a wall behind somebody. Um, if they're not comfortable sharing their background with you, then they might put up one of the, the virtual backgrounds as well. But here you can ask students to go someplace to, to show you life outside of their home. Uh, and so you're going to get a lot of different results from your students. You can also ask your students to explore. Ask them to go look for something. Um, I had a group of biology students who were asked to go outdoors and, and find different types of organisms, and, and they took recordings of this. Now, as a viewer, I, I don't know if I really enjoyed looking at all these little creepy crawlies, um, but the students loved it. And so they were able to um, take their own recordings and also look at, at things that other people found in their own backyards, quite literally. You can also use field recordings to bring in other voices. This is a great opportunity for students to go around and interview experts or panels of people um, and bring this into their their homework so that they can get more uh, diverse perceptions on a given topic. And finally, we have demonstrations. So now you can actually see your students in real time uh, taking on you know, a challenge. They're going to be learning new tasks and new skills. Um, you know, you can give them at home science experiments and they can record it or that you can do simulations. I think somebody in here said they were from uh, nutrition. You know, if they have to, I don't know, come up with a, a meal plan, uh, you can watch them do the preparations, things like this. So uh, when we think of field recordings, don't just think about yourself, think about your students too, uh, get them involved. 
It can also just be as simple as introductions. I saw one instructor who wanted to really add that human touch to their online course. And so they um, did an introduction in their backyard while they were playing their guitar. So lots of different possibilities, uh, maybe that we haven't fully explored in the past. Now, with that being said, I know that uh, we sometimes have what I call the technology imbalance. And I think we always probably knew about it, but it really became uh, obvious during the pandemic as everybody was scrambling to go remote. There is a lot of technology out there. Uh, we're looking at iPads, tablets, we're looking at laptops, we're looking at Chromebooks, desktops. Uh, we've got that the smartwatch up there in the corner. And I know there's even more technology that I didn't just rattle off. So some students have a whole host of technology at their fingertips. And then we have others who have virtually nothing. And on top of all of the different types and amounts of technology, we know that people have different um, access to the internet. So for instance, you may have somebody who has very fast internet connectivity, but um, then again, you may have students who are in rural positions where their internet is uh, spotty at best. And so you're going to have students driving and looking for free Wi-Fi connections. We also may have families who are all logging in and trying to use the, the internet. And as a result, uh, maybe if you've ever been in one of those classes where the webcams were on, their webcams uh, you know, started to freeze because there were too many users uh, trying to access the internet at the same time. So with all of these complications, how do we bridge that gap and, and what can we do? Well, now this is my, my attempt at humor here for you. The one thing that we know about most of our students, I will not say all, but most everyone has a cell phone. You know, on this screen, this is a Zoolander. And I think there's a sequel that came out. I've never seen it, but um, maybe I can throw a, a quick question at you. Does anybody remember when the original, the very first Zoolander movie came out without looking it up? Um, if you're not familiar with this movie, it is a comedy. The character here that we're looking at on the screen, he is a supermodel and he was always on his teeny tiny little cell phone. Melissa says 2000, it's pretty good. That's, that's not a bad guess at all. Um, I had to look this up yesterday. It was shocking to me. This is um, from 2001. I remember these cell phones, right? They were teeny tiny. They could fit into the smallest pocket imaginable. Um, I used to see women, you know, scrambling to find it in their purse because good luck. Uh, we don't really see cell phones like this anymore. The cell phones that we have now they are computers. Um, so this is something that we can use to our advantage. You know, if you think back to that previous slide, we don't know if our students have any of th this technology, but the vast majority of them do have a cell phone. Granted, it's a little bit bigger than, than this one right here. Um, so hopefully this made you laugh and smile. Um, if you remember the teeny tiny phones, the flip phones, um, in 20 years, we've come a long way. Okay, so let's take a look at the steps because we've got about 10 minutes left. And I'll show you how you and your students can use KMS Go. And it's just a few steps. It's really not bad. I am not paid to support this technology. I just happen to really like it. The first thing is you're gonna have to pull out that cell phone. And again, whether you're an iPhone user or an Android user, um, they're, the steps are relatively the same. Heltura has a couple of different uh, mobile applications. If you're not sure which one to look for, uh, look for the one that has this multicolor star logo. 
Next. It's going to ask you to enter the URL of your site. And again, I will be sending all of this to you in follow-up information. So uh, please don't, don't worry. Uh, you will have all of these resources. Um, so this is the this is the website, mediaspace.niu.edu. Remember, I told you there's two entrances to find your videos. So this is the Mediaspace uh, link. Next, it's going to ask you to click on the people icon and log in. Now, um, I think they may have recently done an update. I was just looking at my phone today. Mine has switched sides. So it is on the top right corner next to the gear icon. Um, but whether it's top left or top right, if you find that little people icon, you can click on that to log in. Now, login is going to look a little different if you're a student versus an instructor. So I put both examples up there on the screen. Uh, students will need to log in with their ZID versus instructors will need to log in with their AID. And then your password is going to be whatever password you use to get into Blackboard. Sounds pretty simple so far, right? Okay. The fourth step here is you can upload or record a video. So this mobile app, I wanna be clear, is not a whole new piece of software where they're going to learn how to record videos and they're going to edit them um, and they're gonna become you know, videographers in, in their own free time. They're actually just asking you to utilize your, your current technology on your cell phone. So if you have an existing video, you can upload it. Or if you want to record a brand new one, um, then you can click a red button and start recording a new one. Um, that's all there is to it. It's going to use uh, familiar technology. And I feel that our students between selfies and FaceTime, um, I, th I think they're gonna recognize what these look like. And here are the last steps. There, there's just a few of them. Um, you do have the option, you can trim the video before uploading it. Um, this is very, very basic editing tools. Um, basically, it's just allowing you to crop off the ends of your video. So if you have some dead air time and you want to chop that off on either end, you can do so. Uh, but really, that's, that's about it as far as um, editing functions go. You can give your video a title and a description, as well as um, tags. Once you accrue a lot of Kaltura videos, um, it's nice to put tags on them so that you can search through your videos by keyword. Then you just click done, and you can either upload it or you can say, I will upload later to postpone it. Uh, once you do that, it goes directly into your Kaltura Media Gallery. So again, you can access this video um, either from that login through Blackboard or through that external website, Mediaspace. And now we're on to the final section, just a couple of uh, slides to show you what the student upload process looks like. And if you've ever used Kaltura, I think you'll find that it looks very similar to the instructor experience. So this is just a screenshot from one of my Sandbox courses, but here your students can um, click the little plus button, right? That's where they can attach a file and they're gonna look for that uh, little shopping cart that says content market. Next, they have an option of um, clicking on something that says Kaltura video. On a side note for you as instructors, you can either insert videos using the Kaltura video button as seen on the side of the screen, or if you have created a graded interactive video quiz, um, then you would use the Kaltura video quiz button. Uh, the one that you'll probably want to disregard is the Kaltura gallery option. And last but not least here, uh, this is where students will see a list of all of their videos that they have either recorded or uploaded. And all they have to do is click that blue embed button and it attaches itself to the Blackboard assignment.
So that was it. That's the extent of using KMS Go, but it's this idea that now anywhere you go, anywhere you go with your cell phone, you can create a video. And I say you loosely, um, you or your students. For additional support, this is NIU's Kaltura support page. Uh, we have a whole bunch of information here, uh, common questions, or if you're troubleshooting, if you're having a problem, I encourage you to look under the FAQ section. All right, so we've got a few minutes left. I'm going to open up the floor to any of you. Is there any question that I can answer? Uh, Megan? Yes. I typed a question in the chat. I don't know if you saw it. I did not. Uh, can the short video can a short video be easily uploaded into a discussion board? Yes, absolutely. Um, can you no problems there? Yes. Can you demonstrate that for me? Sure. We've got about two minutes left. So if anybody has to drop off, that's fine. Otherwise, I'm going to <laughs> Sorry. just uh... Sorry about that. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm happy to stay around. So okay. um, but if anybody needs to leave, please don't feel obligated to stay. So let me stop that and let me do a screen share here. Um maybe. Here we go. Okay. Okay, let me hop into um, a sandbox. Are you able to see my screen okay? Yes, I can see it. Okay, so let's see. Um, let me just create, this is an ultra course, but um, let me just create really quickly here um, a discussion board. Here we go. Okay, so um, again, anybody who needs to insert a video for a discussion board, whether it's the instructor or the student, they are going to look for that little plus button, insert content, and again, they'll look for the shopping cart that says content market. Instructors will by default have a lot more applications that appear on their screen. So uh, you may need to scroll down. I think these are in alphabetical order. And here are your Kaltura videos. So you can click on that. And then you have to wait. Um, okay, so here's one of my videos, um, which actually I'm going to send to you as a resource. Um, and this walks people through how to use Kaltura for the very first time. But I'll embed that. I can change the name of the video if I would like or I can just leave it the way it is. And additionally, if I have anything else that I want to attach to my discussion post, such as some text, and I'll click save. And there it is. Um, Thank you, Megan. I didn't realize it was so simple. We try, we hope, uh, um, uh, any of these uh, integrations. I, my idea here is not to give you a, a whole bunch of extra steps. No, I, I tried it earlier this semester, having students upload and um, to the discussion board, but it turned out to be a <laughs> quite the fiasco. So I think I'll have them use Kaltura next time. Well, and um, so I am going to send you an email follow up and okay. one of them is a link to a recording that I made on how to use Kaltura uh, for uh -huh. brand new users and okay. it is a shareable link so you can okay, put it good. in your discussion good. board and good. tell students to watch it. Good. I think I'll use it next semester. Wonderful. Okay. Perfect. Bless you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. All right. Let me hop back into Zoom. Maybe. Stop sharing. There we go. All 
Uh, Jenny said, can you show the media space URL again? Yes, absolutely. And let me drop that into the chat for you. Yeah, I was trying to download it as you were talking and giving the description <laughs> of the multicolored star. That was huge because like three different ones popped up when I searched <laughs> my app store. Yes. So, so thank you for the um, specifics. Let me, let me pull that up for you. I'm grabbing it right now. Um, okay. I did notice um, the first time that I went to use this, it said that the link didn't work. Um, I did not realize that uh, the mobile app auto populates HTTPS. So when I pasted this in there, it had HTTPS twice. So if you get that error, um, try to go back and delete one of those. Okay. I don't know that this is the appropriate forum. Um, and so stop me if it is not. Are there any like privacy concerns with using videos and that kind of thing with our students? Well, I guess it depends um, when you're saying using videos, are you talking about your videos or student videos? The students, having the students create a video. I mean, I feel like most of them are fine with it. And of course I would always handle an exception, but no, I think this is a, a great uh, place to ask that question. And so typically speaking, most of the videos um, are, are going to be for public use in the sense that it's public for that particular class. Um, remember that unless they create a link and make it accessible to anybody outside of their classroom, um, they are the ones controlling who can see it. Um, now, with that being said, I did have an instructor, I, I think they were um, teaching physical therapy, and they asked students to do uh, kind of a mock simulation of a brand new patient intake process. And so th um, the students actually had loved ones pose as the uh, patient. And because they were concerned that, you know, maybe somebody shouldn't see this video, the instructor um, specifically put in the instructions that you should upload this video to the assignment and I'm the only one who can see it. Okay. So in that so case. Just kind of acknowledge it up front. Yes, absolutely. Um, otherwise, you know, you can share videos, say like in a Blackboard discussion board or Yellow Dig, and anybody who's enrolled in the class will then be able to have access to that video. Um, so I, I think I would probably put the um, policy or the expectations in the assignment itself so that you're just upfront with your students. And if anybody has any questions, I'm sure they would reach out and contact you. Okay, thank you. But typically speaking, if your students share that video, it only goes to you and potentially the other people enrolled in the course. Um, so, you know, otherwise it's secured and blocked where nobody else can just view it. Great question. All right, I'm going to stop the recording.